Worm drives, backlash, turret braces, structural rigidity, cross roller bearings, zero backlash, harmonic drives. XP 1000, all of these and more in today's video. Ugh. Hey, thanks for joining us. I'm Zach from Motocrane, and in this video, we're gonna walk through our new modular upgrade for Motocrane Ultra, the XP base. But before we get into all the details of this new awesome base upgrade, I wanna talk a little bit about the design history of Motocrane Ultra and what led us to introduce this new technology. So let's rewind to 2018 when we were designing Ultra and our state-of-the-art swing axis technology was this worm drive that you see here. And how it works is the swing motor would lay sideways and make this worm gear rotate, which causes the outer race of the slewing drive to rotate and that becomes the rotation of the swing axis. And in order to make this work, you have to have a very, very small amount of gap between this worm gear and the actual slewing drive here. And you wanna minimize that, but there will always be some very small amount of backlash. And while that amount of backlash is very small here, when you translate that out 12 feet, it ends up being about an inch or two at the end of the arm. So after years of research and development and design experience, we decided to finally take matters into our own hands and create a drivetrain that gave us the best of both worlds. And we created the Synchromonic powertrain, which uses this as a primary means of gear reduction. This is a strain wave or harmonic gear reducer, which is a zero backlash, very high efficiency, very high torque output gearbox. And it uses a very cool principle of gear reduction, which again, allows it to be zero backlash. And synchromonic is really a two-part word. It is a synchro chain plus harmonic drive solution, um, first using a primary gear reduction stage of a synchro chain belt, which is also zero backlash, which gives us an enormous torque output that allows for very high responsiveness and zero backlash on the XP base. So while the original worm drive represents simplicity and robustness, it also represents limitation in terms of the total amount of performance that we can extract from the swing axis. Now with the synchromonic drivetrain that we've developed, we've virtually eliminated that limitation and we can pull a lot more power and precision through the swing axis. So we've talked a little bit about the design history of Motocrane Ultra and a comparison between the two drive types. Now let's actually get into the anatomy of the XP base and some of the features and benefits. Now there's some familiar features here if you know the original base like the four speed rail clamps and that's because the XP base uses the exact same speed rail spacing as the original. So there's no refabrication needed, it's just dropping it right onto the same speed rail spacing that you've already set up on your vehicle. Um, on the back side here, we're actually utilizing the exact same base driver unit, or BDU, as we call it. And that's really like the electronics box of the base. And that allows existing customers to actually just buy the XP base without that BDU, swap their old one over, and just update firmware. So it's one less thing that has to be built completely from new and scratch. Um, and then on the top here, we have the same pedestal design that allows the existing ultra turret to drop right down in place and get bolted in. In addition to those familiar features, there's also some new things about the XP base that I wanna go over. And the first is the turret braces that you see here. And I'm gonna go over these in detail, but these fortify the joint between the base pedestal and the ultra turret. And the XP base includes the hardware that's needed to add those brackets to the ultra turret. And on the far side here is a new swing motor compartment, which houses the much larger and torquier motor used by the XP base. Here. So as I explained before, the XP base uses a zero backlash powertrain. And what that means is from the motor all the way to the final drive, there is no play or give or space in any of the gearing. And because of that precision and efficiency, we can get much more aggressive with the control rates. In fact, 300% more aggressive because the XP base can deliver over a thousand foot-pounds of peak starting and stopping torque. And that results in a much more responsive arm operator experience. In fact, a 360 degree swing with the XP base takes less than six seconds, or with the original base, it takes over eight seconds. 
So another benefit of having zero backlash and much more aggressive control rates is the higher operating smoothness of the XP base. And this is especially important for our customers that do a lot of stationary jib work where you might be doing like a pack shot or some detailed close-ups at low speed. And you don't want any kind of shake in the start or stop of the move. So I'm gonna demonstrate that just by turning up the smoothing on the swing axis and do a quick move and I'll let off the joystick and you can see how smooth the axis stops. And you can imagine that translated all the way 12 feet to the lens and it comes down just really, really buttery smooth. Voila. The XP base has also been designed to much higher standards of stiffness and rigidity, which allows it to serve as a much more robust platform for the rest of Ultra to perform on. And integral to that stiffness and rigidity is a large diameter cross roller bearing that the base pedestal operates on. Now cross roller bearings are used in applications where there can be absolutely no play or flex between the inner and the outer race. So a cross roller bearing is perfect for this application where we demand that stiffness. Then in addition, we've also added these turret braces and these are pretty cool. These are the only exterior steel part of the entire design. These are machined from 314 stainless steel and they're finished in black oxide and that contributes to them being insanely stiff. So these are not made out of aluminum. These are actually steel and they're fastened directly next to the inner race of the cross roller bearing. And once the ultra turret gets mounted here, turnbuckles are added up to some included brackets that allow the moment load of the ultra turret to have a much more efficient path down into that rigidity of the cross roller bearing. So all of the flex that you might have seen in an existing ultra turret is completely gone. In addition to all the swing axis performance that we've added with the XP base, we've also expanded integrations for accessories. More specifically, we've added Accessory Com and Accessory Power 2. And you can see these ports up here on the base pedestal, as well as their complementary ports down here on the rest of the base. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in the appropriate extensions here on Accessory Com and Power to show what this setup might look like in the real world and demonstrate what you can do with these. So with the accessory comm and accessory power ports, I've added the extensions that you would run from the base down into the vehicle along with the main power cable. And that gives you these inputs right here for accessory comm and accessory power too. Now, this is in addition to the existing accessory power that's already available through the PSU and runs through the main cable. So what can you do with accessory comm and accessory power too? Well, for those that are running the Airy SRH3, you can now provide both three and four pin XLR or both 24 and 12 volts through the base natively. And that's because your Airy SRH3 requires both of those voltages in order to operate. So in this configuration, you might have a block battery or Cine VCLX with three and four pin XLR inputs that you want to run through the system up to your SRH3. So you'd use our three and four pin cable set plugged into Accessory Power 2 and also accessory power on the PSU. And then you have the complementary cables up here on the base pedestal, providing those three and four pin XLR outputs, which would ultimately lead down the arm to the head. With the accessory comm and accessory power two ports, you can take advantage of our full suite of accessory cables, such as our G1 comms integration, our G1 power integration, our Movi XL battery integration. You can really do a lot of things with these ports. And the point is to expand the capabilities of the accessory integration so that you can have the flexibility to choose what you're running through the slip ring based on your needs and your project. So who is the XP base upgrade for? Well, it's not optimized for our Ultra customers using Ultra in a temporary or universal capacity. We've really designed this from the ground up for our customers that are running dedicated camera cars that have the structural integrations fabricated into those chassis to make sure they're getting the highest levels of performance out of their remote arm systems. During development of the XP base upgrade, we partnered with several Ultra customers to make sure that we delivered all of the benefits that they were after. The XP base not only delivers a massive boost to swing axis performance, it also serves as a much more robust foundation for any future potential updates to Ultra. So if you're an Ultra customer and you're looking at the XP base upgrade, wondering if it's right for you, make sure you comment or contact us with any questions that you have. We'd love to get in touch. Thanks for watching.